One of the goals of this podcast is to create dialogue around how can we go beyond best practices to create data-informed practices because so often what we see with our partners and my backgrounds in higher ed too, I come out of student success and advising, is that we need to know there's there's not a one size fits all answer for students. And oftentimes it can be student specific, student group specific, but even institution specific, depending on the mix of students, the community that they're in, the needs of that community. And so Using data to informed approaches can empower institutions to be informed by best practices, but to adapt and build upon best practices that might not be truly working for their students or moving forward the needle towards institutional goals. Have you experienced time when best practices fell flat or sort of national approaches to students fell flat? And have you used data and the technologies and platforms um, that you have at your disposal to help craft practices that were more refined or more specific to your particular student population? That's a really good question. And I, I wouldn't necessarily say that we've had something fall flat, but perhaps no, the first iteration, we didn't get what we'd hoped for, um, and it and it might, it most likely was not a result of the practice itself, not being a worthy practice, but how we implemented the practice, um, or how we had um, maybe we fell through on some of the things that we that we had thought we needed to do. Um, I would say. As an example of, of of how we have refined our work, because UTSA has been, we've been laser sharp focused on student success issues and really making some significant changes to our first year, second and third year retention and our four and six year graduation rates for almost a decade now. Really started the focus um, in around 2012, 2013 launched quite a few major initiatives in 2014. And so now that we've been in that um, mode for a while, it's, are these still working? Are these still doing what we need them to do? And as our outcomes are getting stronger, you have to continuously refine, right? To get that next level of success. And so you know, originally it was let's let's work toward the masses. Let's 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 see how we can move the needle in big chunks, which we were able to do. And now it is our focus is starting to look at okay, what are those populations that we can now also work toward to help get to that next next level? And so one of the things that we have done is that really excited about, and we started this within. Um, our centralized programs, and in the future, we will be moving this out towards some of the programs that are happening in the colleges. Um, but we worked with um, and did an impact analysis of our various programs. And as an example, um, with our tutoring services and our supplemental instruction programs, we were looking at, we knew that they'd been successful. We've done lots of, you know, um, working with IR and looking at you know, students who participate and students who don't participate who are enrolled in the course, what are those course outcomes? And and we've we've done that for years, right? We've done that for years. Um, but we had never disaggregated the data further than that to say, well, what about those students? You know, what about some of those um, demographic characteristics of the students that are in the class? Um, and, and often you hear even with, with tutoring, that you'll hear, well, tutoring is hard to assess. You know, there's some biases in it because students who either want to go from a, a B plus to an A will use tutoring or a students too late in the game will realize that they need it. So how do you really assess it? And so um, by working with um, and doing an impact analysis, we were able to find that overall, we were seeing a lift, right? We were seeing some good, some good progress and some lift between, you know, for us, for overall, for all of our students. But when we were able to disaggregate and look at which particular student populations were seeing that 
that lift at, at greater amounts. Who are those groups? Those were the students that we had been trying to move the needle on or, and trying to get our teams to do outreach to. Um, but until they actually saw it in the data and it showed that, for example, um, our black males with tutoring, we're seeing a, a significantly higher increase in, in lift for persistence than just our general population. It, by seeing it in the data and actually seeing the visual of it, it I think it triggered and it, it it triggered in the minds of our of our uh, frontline staff, uh, support staff that, oh wow, this this is this is true and and we can make a huge impact. We see it here. It's not someone's thought or someone's you know um, a best practice that someone did somewhere else where that's not anything like UTSA. And so when we were able to run our programs through and show that not only are all students being impacted, but we can make an even bigger difference with these subsets of students by working with them. The, another example is with our academic um, success co uh, coaching team, where a lot of the work in the past had been focused on graduate students and then even on honor students, and which was, you know, which is great, but we, you weren't seeing that that huge impact and lift because those students were going to continue on um, and do well. Um, but when we showed in through the data that, well, our students who are in the lower quartiles, our first year students, our students who, um, another group was um, you know, students who were part time um, or who had been academically dismissed and coming back, when those students participated, that was almost a double digit lift. And so seeing that visually um, in the data and talking through that and showing, you no, know, this actually does work and can work even better um, if we pay attention to these types of things um, has been extremely impactful for, for our staff as we're, as we're changing and evolving, right, our processes and, and how we approach. Um, in the past, we had been well, whoever comes to us, we will help, and we're a great service. And that's true, right? We're a great service. We provide great service to whoever comes. But now it is the approach of, well, actually, and it's become even more so in as we come out of COVID and when, we, when a lot of our services went online, it was the students weren't just coming because you just didn't happen to walk by and see someone physically in a space and say, oh, I think I'm going to go in there and see what that's like. You had to intentionally go online and find where that service was. So the, the importance of outreaching to and, and calling and emailing and saying, hey, we are here, here's a service, and this service works really well and you know, with specific populations and driving them in versus saying, hey, we're here to serve you when you come. No, it's now, it's like, no, we want you to come in. We specifically want you to come in and see us. Um, it's, a, it's a new world for us with that, but the data, is what allowed that change and that shift to start to happen. Because we've talked about it for a long time.